All right, hello, welcome to the part two of how OWASP can help security teams. This is the DevSecOps, you know, section. Um, what I'm actually going to do is going to show what we've done yesterday, uh, and then you know maybe just do a quick round of intros on who's here, um, and then uh, we will you know continue. And and part of the again what we try, we do here at the, uh, the summit is that every one of these sessions is recorded, so you know it's also a good way to to share with others who can't make it or you know to come back to um you know uh, this presentation so what we what we're looking here is is basically answering the question of you know how can you know what projects should i start now if i'm if i'm working on if I'm, if I'm a member of security team you know how, how you know where should i go you know what's what's the best os project and then you, at the moment if you come in here right you see a, a, a massive list of projects right which is you know amazing but you know the question that you, what you want is a bit more context so what we started to do yesterday was start to look at a tool and then looking at this sort of the, the, the typical dev safe ops or, or the kind of software development life cycle kind of you know loop where you build some stuff then you code it then you plan and then you know, sorry the other around you assess you planning you code it then you build it then you test it and you release it deploy operate monitor and then do some training assessment plan etc so the idea here is that looking at the individual tools um, where do they fit within that? Where are the big centers of gravity? Uh, and actually, just as Simon was just mentioning before we start this, was you know it's also going to be very interesting once we improve this and maybe define better what we mean by each of these. You know, for for the users to say, actually, I'm using Zap over here and I'm using Zap over there, um, because each of those in in organizations will end up being a different team or a different job spec, a, so the role. So you know, it's important to see how they're using the multiple teams. And then you might have somebody who says, oh, I, I'm I'm doing coding, I, I shouldn't use Zap. But actually, we might say, no, actually, look, here's some use cases where you do that. Or somebody might say, well, I just run live systems, I don't use Zap. We go, actually. Here's a way to use Zap in a live system, right? So, so this was a thing we found is quite useful. So in this case, Zap, which is a great testing tool, you know, you can do the training, testing, code, and operation. Then we actually have this HUD, which is a really cool sort of almost manual, you know, uh, tool uh, aid tool to help to do security assessment. So we kind of says, well, that one really fits into the more the, the assessment, the, the kind of understanding the security pen testing and stuff like that. Uh, which also actually might also be here on the test. Actually, thinking about it, actually, actually thinking about this, I think I put it on the wrong place. Uh, Simon, just quickly, I think it's actually on testing, right? Because this assess is actually assess the the, the requirements, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I think it's more on the testing side, although Agreed. it's the manual test, not the automated test, but it's on the testing side, right? And then um, yep. cool. And then we got the Fact Dojo, which is a really cool tool that you know gives you a lot of the the vulnerability management and allows to to really get a good sense. And then of course that's a monitor and operate. The this is a, a tool to do a lot of DNS reconnaissance and visualize it and graph the whole thing. So that's on the monitor side of things. Then we got the dependency check, which is to check dependencies. That's on plan, code, and builds. Um, then the juice shop. Sorry, juice shop is on training. Uh, Mer Merriam, which is now a threat intelligence, so open source intelligence tool, goes into the monitoring side of things. We got the mod security set on monitor on operations. Uh, the the Lockhart Security Shepherd is another training tool, and then the last one we we were looking yesterday was the this sort of train you know the the security framework, uh, so security knowledge framework, which is a great way to train developers and actually help them to write secure code, which again fits this sort of two. And, and what we're now looking at, I think we can start with, is uh, we can start looking at just the documents, right? Because I think I cover all the tools here. I think what we can now look at is, is the documents, right? And, and where do they fit within the, um, you know, the multiple projects? Actually, before we do that, can, for the OWASP leaders on the call, uh, actually, I realized I didn't have my video on. Um, could you just have a quick intro uh, so I'm um, Dennis Cruz. I, I'm actually CTO at CISO at Glasswall. I've been an OWASP leader for a long, long time, done lots of projects, helped with chapters, helped with conferences, and, um, and I'm still super passionate about OWASP. Uh, maybe Simon, quick interest about you. Hey, Simon Bennett, um, SAP project lead, now working at Stackhawk. Sam? 
I'm Sam. I'm a OWASP London chapter leader. Uh, I'm also the chair of the OWASP uh, chapter committee. Uh, and I'm also a uh, project co-leader of two OWASP projects, OWASP Nataka and OWASP WAF evaluation criteria. Very cool, Grant. You're on mute, Grant. Yep. Oh no, not yet. No. Can you hear? Is that your headphones being muted rather than Zoom, Grant? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Still no sound. <laughs> well, we, we, we can do with sign language. So <laughs> Grant is current board member of OASP and uh, again, another application security giants and, and, and source of knowledge. So, uh, and, and, and we just speak at, which, uh, which is microphone is not working. So. Well, I uh, just switched to a different mic. I don't know if that helps. Oh, yes. that works. There you go. The one is having too many mics on your desk. Thanks, uh, Dennis. It was very, very kind of you. Um, yes, I also involved with a bunch of OS projects, uh, but primarily um, I've been elected to the board, so I help push things in the right direction, hopefully. And cool. If I'm not, tell me which direction you wanted to be pushed in and explain why. Brilliant. Any other, sorry, project leaders in the call or, or OASP chapter or leaders? All right. Okay. By the way, for the, for the members of my team here, you guys should become project leaders. It's the best way to learn. Join projects. Tons of projects need help. Exactly. Right. Start, contribute, you know, and, and, and go and... And, and, yeah. uh, and but involved. also similarly, right, Dennis, I think if you do have an open source project, uh, then I think you will achieve a uh, better value if you contributed to OWASP, right? I know a lot yeah. of organizations, right, including yours, right, Dennis, uh, yeah. they actually do use GitHub and publish open source projects. Uh, but um, I think if you're already in open source, there's a, there's a value in actually do donating the project to OWASP, that's what I call it. But that really means that, uh, that your projects will get a global visibility and a massive worldwide community of volunteers yeah. from all over the world. Uh, and yeah, if you, if you publish it on your own GitHub, people will say, well, they, they may or may not find it. They should be looking specifically for it. But see, one advantage of being an OWASP project, you can be featured in uh, one of the talks like this one. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, Amazon Petro, right? Scotty Bot, right, would be a great candidate. For it. Yeah, I was thinking about this. And yesterday, by the way, Dennis, we spoke like, yeah, we we definitely want to be involved, and we'll be involved very soon. Yeah, Scotty Bot is, is the variation of our bot because I kept saying that like, these guys were like beat me up, Scotty. We're like the Scotty team, like make sure that the operation was running. So they created a really cool bot that actually, you know, there's a thing where, for example, like if you have a lot of activity stuff in AWS, you get pinged in Slack to say, hey, was this you? Right, which is actually pretty cool, right? Like, you know, it's basically a great gamification of how the thing works, right? So when you have a security activity, you get a ping in Slack to say, was this you? And actually what we do, we create a Jira ticket and then you get, you can go to see the details in Jira. And then when you press okay, that actually changes the Jira status, right? So it works quite well. Cool, all right. Oh, ask cheat sheets. Where does this guy fit? Which is, by the way, is an amazing, uh, amazing project, right? And I think, you know, has, you know, some really insane level of cheat sheets, right? If you haven't seen it, right? Uh, I'm still sharing my screen, right? You are, yeah. Yeah, so it is It is pretty pretty amazing, right? And, and you can see the documentation and everything now is marked down. Well, so you actually stumbled upon the very latest edition, which is GraphQL, Dennis. This has just yeah. been released. So for everyone trying to secure their GraphQL endpoints, uh, there is a cheat sheet for you now. Actually, it's quite interesting. Look, I, you know, the thing I was just suggest, like, you know, I was just talking about releases, right? You know, in the, literally the meeting I just came from, right? It'd, it'd be good to actually do like a release thing, right? Because some, some of these things, you know, you, you release so often that after a while, you know, you're like, you need to know which one is the latest ones, right? So Yeah, we do weekly zap releases. Yeah, yes. you guys do, <laughs> I mean, zap, you guys do quite well, actually, yeah. We, uh, we now have a, um, uh, a nightly build in Jenkins that monitors for Zap updates <laughs> and downloads them, and then suggests pull requests to our own our own version of Zap, the the um, sidecar. Nice, very cool. Oh, also, then it it pulls in the into Slack to let us know, hey, there's a pull request now for that too. So maybe that's something we should add to your bot. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. You can. Right, cool. All right, so where? What do you guys reckon? So, so this is the sheet sheets clearly on 
on on coding right but i actually use the cheat sheets very effective on training i used to like when i do when i was doing a lot of training i would literally spend almost sometimes half a day just going through the sheet sometimes yeah because it's crazy value and and also in test because uh yeah. you know if you're red teaming this is a great way to go and find a way to attack particular types of things that you know might be a weak spot in your organization yeah correct okay any other comments on the cheat sheets. So just above the cheat sheets, there's the ASVS. Yep. Yeah. Um, where is this? Yes. Second one from the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, yeah, that's the other big one. Which is, which is again, it's, it's a, it's quite a, a, a spectacular document uh where it talks about all the stuff has all sorts of controls and for each one of these tells you this is very prescriptive which is really good right yeah so so right now so the asvs is the only OWASP project that is prepared to call itself a standard so this is actually something we do expect dev teams to be able to write code to to meet these requirements right so it's something you can actually uh, certify against You'd have your applications uh, certified by various organizations who want to participate in the SES certification. Um, it's also because it's the type of knowledge that we expect devs to have when building a product. It's also one of the primary inputs to the uh, application security curriculum. Yep. Yeah, so for example, I was in Petra, like what, what I would like to see is each of these in JIRA, right? And then as for the products that we have, we should be checking, right? And this, this becomes, you know, when we talk about the vulnerabilities and the risks and the mitigation controls and the checks, right? So this should become an item that, you know, we basically track and then, you know, we start to provide, you know, because the, the thing where I feel that is still a lot of work to do, and again, we can contribute is the next level, right? Of this, right? Like how do you actually do this per application? How do you actually do this in a particular app? So you need to then go down, but also to say where is not relevant, right? But you know, and ideally there should be a unit test, an integration test that connects to this, because we should be able to, because because the, the point of this is if you almost like if you think about this as a standard and um, almost a you know part of our, our risk matrix, right? You know, part of the reason why you you know we would have um, what's it called? Um, you know, a particular fix, you know, part, part of the reason is that you want, um, yeah, look, so, so for example, applications build deployment processes, right? Some of the things you guys have been working on should be linked to this, right? Or like, look, verify that the server is hardened as a recommendation, right? This is the one, this is the, almost the node that underpins, for example, the work that you guys have been doing on secure builds. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's the power because the power is then we could say we are level one, level two, level three. So that piece of work that, you know, we've been doing, you know, and when we choose not to do something, right. And then we'll, then we'll talk about risk acceptance. Basically when, when, when the business says we're going to accept risk, it basically means that we're not doing this. So it's very important that we also brutal because the thing about this is that if we're not doing this, we're not, we, we basically, and it's not, I think compliance is, is a bit of a, a problem here word. I, I, I think in the beginning, you almost want to think about almost a maturity model of this is almost a maturity level, right? Like how mature are we in, in our organization or in that particular project? And the maturity almost depends on how many of these you actually are or you are doing and which level you are. Yeah, so, so literally the levels uh, listed here are sort of level one is you would expect all web applications to, to meet the requirements there. Level two is where you ideally want to be when you're a fairly mature organization and your app is pretty well built. Um, level three is for apps that have very high security requirements. Yeah, but this is, this is where I would now go... Um, devil advocate right because i i actually don't think that works exactly like that in organizations 
Mm-hmm. I think what what can work, or at least oh, okay, my, my recommendation, right, is um, is actually you do something like this, right? So this is this is something I built, right? Actually, for a customer, right? When I open source, it was really cool. Wow, it was four years ago. Bloody hell! Um, and um, and what this was is this was a way to visualize the um, the actual SAM and BSIM, right? Which is a variation, right? Of, mm-hmm. uh, of this. And actually what, what you got here is actually you got the data. He actually, actually a guy even did the OSVS. So there you go. So you got the ASVS here, right? I think you, you need are... to add it to read me, Dennis, because I was just about to suggest this project, which is absolutely awesome. <laughs> yeah, so- I Can't believe it was four leaders, years ago when you created project this. Project leaders needed, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. Somebody wants to join in, right? Um, uh, but you are, and I you know about the project, so definitely. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I will point it out. Uh, we do have a talk because Linus presented it at the West London. That was probably before you moved here. Uh, mm-hmm. I will just uh, ping you the link. Um, yeah. It's it's really really awesome. Um, yeah, yeah so and I'm saying you can just spin up in minutes, and you can basically do the whole process yeah. of automating, of collecting, of all the uh, checklists, basically. Yeah, actually, I have to months. say, it is amazing how things evolve, right? Like I, I would say these days, I would even just put all of this in serverless and um, and in, in dedicated servers, right? Like this just shows how much. So, did this funny life. story? I had a vendor approaching me with a sales pitch trying to sell me something like this for uh, BSIM. And I'm like, do you know what? I have a free and open source project which does exactly the same for free. Go away. (laughs) So, okay, the point I was gonna make, okay, by the way, so the thing about this is really cool is you actually have the schema see here in in JSON, right? So you you map the whole thing here and then, um, and then you, um, oops, uh, I think, and then you do the connections, right? Where you basically connect all the dots um yeah so then you got the maturity model oops that um yeah so the schema is the one that connects see the domains and then connects which part of it belongs to each domain right and you got the levels what, what i was going to say is what, what what i've done when i when i use this in the real world is that instead of looking at the level one level two level three four as given by the um, what's it called um, which is what you got here, right? You could see, you know, the, 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 so each of these kind of circles becomes the level, right, mm-hmm. that you're in. Um, what, what we did was to actually say, actually, you could see here, right? The, the logic was that we defined level one as actually where the company was. So, the, so you can see that in this particular organization, level one, and can I draw, right? The, so, 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 Grant, what, what the, the comment I will say is that when you when we say that level like on, on here, right, which is the same thing, right? When you kind of make the case to say level one, let's say all these guys, right? And level two is all these guys, and level three is all these guys, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of the logic, right? And then if you if you do that, you know, you, you connect all the dots, right? My my experience is that what you actually want to do is you want to create um, a version of level one that matches where the company is. So in this case, instead of level one being um, like, a, what's it called? Instead of level one being like a circle, which is what you know level ones are, level two and then level three, right? Sorry, that's supposed to be proper circles, right? But you see like, instead of being like that, what I, what I found works really well is you draw literally what you have here, which is, which parts of the company now we expect everybody to do, right? And the reason we do that is because some things in organization are easier than others, right? So for example, you can see that in this organization, there's already a lot of good work on on standards, right? There's a lot of good work on the software environment and maybe vulnerability management, but there's not a lot of good practice on training. There's no good practice on pen testing. So you wouldn't expect everybody to do a good level of pen test, but you expect everybody to already document or even deploy properly. So what you then have is you got this delta, right? Between Mm -hmm. the level where where we want everybody to be and where this particular team is. So ironically, this team is already better than even the average. So, So for this team, team A, they shouldn't be doing any more than doing already now on training. Right? They, what they should be doing is getting here, right? They should be 
kind of plug. In fact, you could see that the biggest problem these guys have is there, right? So I would actually say that if you look at this team, if you have to, where's the best value for money that you can get, right? Is actually on these three. Because those are the ones that today are the weakest on that team. Does that make sense? It, it does. And, and I can see that working very well for uh, BSIM, uh, for um, uh, BSOM, oh, sorry, DSIM, BSOM, and um, uh, the, the SAM, because those look at maturity of teams with regards to practices. Um, but ASVS, although it does have some overlap with those things, ASVS is more focused on the product rather than the way it's being produced. But it's, it's still maturity. Look, that, that's the thing. So when you look at this, right, for example, right, this guy here, this one, verify that the application build and deployment are performance, right? This yeah. is 90% of this is maturity of the CI pipeline. Correct. So, so there, there are, there are some... You can be, so so a team can be on, I, I could say that I want the level one for every one of my team is level three because we already have a full blown deployment pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the maturity of the organization already has that. If the organization doesn't have that, I'm probably gonna say is level one, right? Or something here, right? Because they, they haven't, you know, they, they don't have the capabilities to do this, right? And it's the same thing for most of this. Right, like you know, a lot of these things here, right, is is about, for example, verify that the servers have anti-automation controls to protect this. Right, a lot of these things, right, if you don't have some minimal, you know, foundation, you can't do it. Right, so I agree that from a level of complexity, there's this path in 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 a particular application. A lot of this will depend on where what is the baseline of the application, and in fact, what frameworks are you using. 100% agree, but you'll see you'll see that the ones that you've highlighted that are related to the process of creating the software, those yeah. all fall into at least level two or higher. Yeah, because but, level one is literally just about the code, right? Yeah, in fact, level one can be you can run a pen test, a black box test against level one. Yep, yeah. but but I, I think the maturity model I I found that it was a great way to to describe that, but. Uh, but cool, right? You, you guys get to see, right? So basically, ASVS. So where where does ASVF fit here? So I got on codes again, training, and would I put it on tests or I yep. think for testing too, right? Yeah, because you can I, be tested against it. Yeah, that that falls into that. Uh, but actually, doesn't ASVS also falls into the sort of the, the the planning or assessment, right? Because this definitely gives you the you know, the things to go for. Because ideally you want to define the standard before you even start coding, right? In fact, yesterday, didn't we look at the, um, there, there was one, one of the other OS projects that actually allows you to uh, define the uh, requirements for yeah. a particular piece of software based on the SVS. Yeah, it was the SKF, right? Was this one here, right? Yeah. Yeah, correct. I think that guy goes there. Cool. Yeah, there's an, also another project for requirements automation called uh, RAT, OWASP RAT. Yeah. That was mentioned yesterday by Vandana. Cool. What project is that? OWASP RAT, RAT. RAT. It's a new project, so it's not no. a uh, flagship, Dennis, one, but right? again, it's something that uh, is worth uh, yeah. checking out. Look at that. Cool. Requirement automation tool. There you go. See, this is the thing, man. Like we, we need like these regular briefings. Like I had no idea about this project, right? It's like amazing stuff. Okay, so which, this is where? This is planning, right? Yeah. Literally, this is on the planning side, right? Yes. It's gathering the, the requirements, yep. Yeah, very cool. Right, so back to the flagships. So we got ASCS, yes, we got cheat sheets. Actually, this guy here, this is um, CSRF it's an one, right? Because I, I think it's flagship, but it's, it feels to me like this stuff now is covered on the frameworks, right? Yes, now, but obviously it wasn't before. And yeah. still, if you are coding uh, without frameworks, which offer uh, CSRF protection, yeah, that's the project to go for. So this is the security testing guide for mobile. 
Yeah, and there's another one for web. There's a MSTG and WSTG. Do, two amazing guides. And actually, MSTG is very important for anyone developing mobile apps uh, at the moment, uh, because that is uh, basically should be your Bible. If your organization is developing any mobile uh, applications, you should just give this to, to your developers and say, there you go, make sure you test it using OWASP MSTG, because it's a very nice methodology. Uh, the document itself is very nicely written and frequently updated. Uh, you're on mute now, Dennis. And a large, you know, I have to say that OS 7 has definitely contributed to the guide, right? Because remember that the first time you guys published on Limpub. Oh, yes. Seven. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's another great initiative, right? The uh, uh, Actually, having the team locked up in a villa and yeah. saying, there you go, guys, now write this document. And then no, uh, they, amazing. They, did they literally went to the summit and they were yeah. basically locked down in, in three villas, right? And Another so very interesting thing to mention about MSTG, I think it's one of the uh, basically very interesting uh, projects which creates a book based on the GitHub mm -hmm. markdown. So it's a, a automated book creation and publishing, uh, which basically produces a PDF, very nice looking print ready PDF, uh, but it is still a collaborative project. So if you are looking to uh, write a book from multiple contributors, I think this is a project to check it out. Okay. I just realized I was just going to capture because I think the views we want to create is we are creating a view per project, right? So this is the one we're doing, right? Per project. I think we, do, we should do one which is per role and then one which is per, um, you know, dev environment, right? Or, or, I don't know, dev stack, right? For example, like mobile, um, you know, et cetera, right? You know, cloud, yeah. Cloud. So another thing that yeah. we uh, forgot to mention since we're talking about ASVS, we also have a CSVS, Container Security Verification Standard. Again, that's a, a relatively recent project. It's not a flagship Ooh. yet. But again, if you're building containers, uh, there's a standard for you. And there's also Docker hardening guides. So uh, many new uh, projects you probably were not aware of, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at this. This is going to be cool. Uh, yeah, so this one, this one is actually, you need to look at Wiki. Again, if it's not yet on the new website. Yeah, uh, there you go. You found it. Nice but but uh, if you get to that site and uh, it looks like that, just ping the person on the right and get them to migrate their content. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. I just, I just yeah, saw but there's that. a PDF. So this is the PDF. That's the document which basically should be your Bible if you are uh, securing your containers. And it's there. Cool. And this is on... Actually, this is on... Um, that's on build and deploy. Yeah. yeah. And there's also MASVS, Mobile Application Security Verification Standard, because the standard ASVS is probably should have been called WASVS because it's more suitable for web applications. MASVS is for mobile apps. Is that? Is and it so, so I actually like what they've done there because uh, mobile takes the, uh, extends the base class of ASVS to cover mobile components. They've done a really good job for that. Uh, it's not here, where, where is it? You... Just look for... Yeah, I think sometimes that list is not populated correctly. Application security verification standard. So, there, uh, there, there. Uh, just add verification into between... Oh yeah, sorry. Application security verification. Security. It's on the project mobile security. Now it's called OWASP mobile security. I think the guys renamed them. So there's an OWASP mobile security. You will find it there in the list. Oh, all right, yeah, you, I, you just went past it. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Yeah, there you go. Cool. You so see the second, second one on the right, OWASP mobile application security verification standard. But you see what they've added, iGOAT. This is basically like an umbrella project to get all the mobile specific stuff under one roof. Ah, okay. Okay, but then that's... So the that's, mobile top 10 will be in here as well. All the different projects, right? Yeah, mobile top 10 is just there, yeah. Oh, there okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, so I think, I think this is what I was thinking here that is, is worth doing a mapping. So it's almost taking that mapping there, right? I guess once you have a visualization of this, right? You can kind of do a mapping on, on per... Like if I'm just a mobile person, right? Now, which ones do I care about? And I think that, that is actually really cool, right? Because yes, that's, that's what you want. If I, if for mobile, mobile developer, here are all the things that are relevant to you, right? Yeah. So in the role, you should have developer, architect, uh, QA, 
yeah. uh, tester, pen tester. Right. Um, you know, you need to um, SecOps person, manager as well, right? For example, yeah. uh, Defect Dojo is perfect for a manager who needs his uh, dashboard. Yeah, so there, there's the mobile security, right? But I think that, that's the thing. So the proactive controls, this is actually, um, this is, I have to say, this is always one of my favorite projects because this, this kind of turned the thing on its head. Instead of looking for bad stuff, it looks for, for, for what they should be doing from the good, from, from the good thing, right? So if mm -hmm. you look at this, these activities where it's about, where is it? Yeah, see, look, define security requirements, leverage, secure, encode, validate, implement, enforce, et cetera, right? So this also be, can become like a, a standard. And, and, and I was in Petra, right? Like the cool thing of the graph that we're creating, right? Is that you can have the same, for example, action or the same vulnerability or the same proactive control or the same activity being linked, for example, not just to a particular standard, but also to one of these. And then this can also become like the checklist that you do for every project, right? Are we actually looking at this? Are we answering these particular you know, items? Uh, which each of these will then have specific, you know, things to look for. Cool. But it's really, really cool. Because, you know, this, this is about being proactive. So, because the, the problem with sometimes the top 10 is that there's cases where you go, well, you know, it's not relevant or we shouldn't be looking at it just now. And then there's always, there's always some excuses sometimes where, not excuses, but, you know, practicalities why it's not 100% relevant, where this is 100% relevant all the time, right? And then we customize it, right? Okay, maybe some of the database, some of the things needs to be tweaked, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite a good thing. And this is the one, again, that I would say fall into the planning, right? And then the development, right? And actually, and even the testing, because it should be testing for it. And I'd even put it into assess as well, because this is where you figure out what the requirements are. That's part of assessment, right? Yeah, 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 correct. Absolutely. Um, Proactive container, ah, container security standards, love it. Um, proactive controls, uh, code. So actually, we're not sure we touched this yesterday, do we? Because this is also another really cool one. So, defect jo dojo we touched on. This is the coding dojo. Yeah, coding dojo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so this is the one that actually has, is this for training, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the one where. You, you kind of actually do the, the training. Yeah, so, so see, like, so, so you got the, a lot of code samples, right, that you can do. And then and I'm sure there's multiple languages on this thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is really cool. So, so one of the things we, we get to do is find a good way to get a, a session with the team, right? And then, you know, because these are the kind of stuff that is really good to do as, as a training session. Do, are, are all your team members uh, OWASP members? Uh, I don't think so. Because um, probably the project that's easiest to do that sort of training in is um, one of the relatively new projects, um, Secure Flag. Yeah. Um, so the Secure Flag project is, uh, I think it's still an incubator stage. But it's a very, it's a very well put together. In fact, it's a commercial project, and you you can buy copies of it to run as SaaS. Um, but it is it provides a a good training environment. This one, yeah, secure flag. Cool. Um, there is a, obviously there's the open source uh, platform which provides some community uh, created training sessions. Um, you can run that in your own environment. It's fairly easy to spin up. Uh, if you're an OWASP member, you actually get access to the full commercial platform as part of your OWASP membership. Um, in fact, that's recently, it used, it was on a, on a test phase with a couple of, um, couple of regions around the world and it's now been made global. So everyone who's an OWASP member just Actually, go to the secure flag open yeah, platform. Idea. I was, let's, let's take this offline because I have an idea of maybe even doing some surprise security champions. Let's okay, brilliant. We'll talk about that a bit later. All right, so on secure flag, I just added that to the tools, right? Because um, mm -hmm. I think that's actually, well, that's an interesting one. That's a tool, yeah, that's a tool like that one because you guys, UI and all that jazz, right? So, 
So where, where would that be, right? On um, training, right? Definitely training, right? Very much on training, yes. Yeah, yeah, very much on training, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a, that's a really good one. Um, all right, so uh, where are we? Um, you know, where were we? We were on the, sorry. We can do, oh, so top 10, actually. So where, where does the top 10 fit on this thing? I just added the top 10 there. So the top 10 is that guy there. Oops, I didn't add the top 10. That the top 10, I was gonna add the top 10. Cool. So the top 10 uh, of OASP, right? Where that's basically, that's an interesting one because that is that a testing one or a development one? So- How about top 10? Where's the main top 10? Sorry. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so so the top 10 um, themselves uh, talk about the project as being, the, the project team talk about themselves as being a um, about uh, creating um, awareness. Um, but unfortunately, it's used as a as a testing standard. Yeah. Um, most test teams come in and they do testing there. I think I think it belongs very much on training, but it is used to test against. Yeah. Oh, no, that's a, it's a funny one because people kept abusing it, and people are like, don't use it like that. But uh, you know, but then it, it was part of the reason why uh, well, it's, it was so, so successful. Uh, yeah, it's it's been so successful because it's been included in things like PCI DSS as this yeah. is the standard to meet, right? Yeah. I think we had I added this right. This is the the tool that we had. Uh, did they add this? So which, which I think you have added this one. Yeah, yeah, I think I've added this one. Uh, offensive test framework, right? That's the mm -hmm. that's the one that's uh, socially. Um, I don't think we added this, right? Have we added this? I think that's the different one. This one here is is that no, is this one? I don't think I've added that. This is this is different, right? Security assessment is efficient, but to make it matter and creative, yeah. But this is like um, this has, this is, looks really cool. What, what is this? This is just, uh, oops. Oh, here you go. Oh, so this is quite interesting. So these are these automates some of the the toolkits. Going to the right. Yeah, no, so this is definitely a testing tool, right? Test framework. Yeah, so this is like a pen test automation uh, toolkit. Yeah. Yeah, so. oh, very cool. Yeah. Definitely. So we have another similar one, which is NetTucker, but uh, there's also another new one you're probably not aware of called uh, Security Box, Dennis, but again, uh, that's slightly different. That's more for uh, kind of your CICD pipeline automation. Again, similar idea where you can uh, orchestrate and automate several tools and you define which tools you want to use. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so. Which one is that? So, so this security box, it was on our list. Yeah, okay. So this so this one is definitely on the testing side of things. Testing side, yeah, yeah. And yeah. security box will be in the same place. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at security box. There you go, secure code box. Uh, let's, let's call it. That one? Yeah. There you go. And if you scroll down, it will oh. show you what it does. So it uh, does a uh, cube hunter. I think out of the box, if you keep scrolling, yeah, it's you see, there you go. It's this. Uh, yeah, at the bottom you will see the tools in the in the code. Um, then it scroll down. Yeah, there you go. So you can see it comes uh, a little bit up. Scroll up a little bit because the maps. There you go. Oh, okay, so yeah. Amas, Cube Hunter, Nikto, Nmap, SSH Scan, SSLI, Trivi, Zap, and WordPress Scan. Uh, yeah, and as an optional, uh, this is these are the demo apps. So you can actually uh, scan real vulnerable apps. Um, this is and really also various cool. hooks. So this is basically uh, your CI/CD DevSecOps in a box, basically. Well, no, this is this is awesome because we we already now we already developed this entire application on top of Kubernetes, right? And if you yep. basically saying that you already got the um, what's it called the the Elm chart, right? Um, so we should just be able to run this Elm chart inside our Kubernetes environment, and you spin up these things all fully configured. Yes. Very cool. I'm shocked that someone's still using budget. <laughs> well, they need something to hack, right, Simon? I, I, I saw people actually use it for many demonstrations. I, still... I still use it locally for really simple stuff, but uh, 
Juice I, Shop I, is the way to go for more modern stuff. Yeah. I was going to say, Simon, I've seen you do hundreds of demos on it. and, and it's, it's the easiest thing listed. just to... <laughs> it's like yeah. me using PHP as code snippets for examples of bad code, because literally I write PHP and it's going to be vulnerable by, by definition. <laughs> I wrote it and it's PHP, it's going to be vulnerable. Well, yeah. budget was written in Java, right, Simon? And yep. uh, I, I think it's not been modified for years. I think and, and it does say you should be you'd be, you'd be better off using Juice Shop on the repo. Exactly, exactly. But I think people prefer to use um, budget store uh, simply because they know that there will be no new vulnerabilities. And right? Juice Shop, <laughs> they keep adding exactly, new stuff yeah. Yeah, every couple of months. You know, so uh, you you try to build a tool which hacks into the Juice Shop, and two months it will be obsolete. But uh, no, this where the budget store it always works so security <laughs> box i put on but also operate right because this is this is actually should, should be running this thing actually in production yeah yeah this is your pipeline so again new project you're probably not aware of it but again it's i think it will be moving towards uh, maturity no, this, is, this is awesome this this one like, this, this. Uh, and again i think this was a donated contributed project so uh some team uh and a, a company, and this close company, they uh, build this and they donated this to Wasp. So on Sam, uh, I'm kind of putting on assess and code, right? But actually, it also has test, isn't it? Because you should be able to test against the the the, the standard. Or are we uh, using checklists? Yeah, I think probably your bit is closer to test. Yeah. Cool. Because it's one thing to have a standard and you build something on a standard and you have like a checklist saying that, yep, 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 I've done it. And then you give it to testers and testers use the same checklist and say, yep, I've tested it and it's definitely there. Yeah. And going through every single control on that Actually, list. The thing about this is that, you know, well, it, it also checks some, is it too much to operate? Because there's a lot of things in here that are operational. I, I would argue that Sam is literally just extend that box and cover the entire eight, right? It is the whole pipeline. It's the whole process of development. You're right, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure from a, I was, I was actually tempted to do exactly that, right? To go, <laughs> there you <Exactly>. go. <laughs> but I, I think it's, you know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna build a, 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 a thing, a, so this goes and goes to Jason, and I think we need to. This this has to have an entry for all of them. Yeah. Right? But um, that's actually quite interesting, right? Way of viewing it, right? Because it does show that you know it's quite spectacular to to do it. Um, and by the way, like the thing that is really cool when you do that maturity model thing, right? Is that there's nothing like showing multiple charts of this to multiple teams to get them to compete, right? You know, when oh, yeah. when you show the the maturity model. That that uh, what's it called? Um, that uh, that graph when you actually show them to the multiple teams, and you show multiple of these ones, right? Makes makes a massive difference. Ah, now oh, you guys get the picture, All right? Let's continue. Let's not lose the speed. Okay, so we got Sam. Fresh where Actually, this one. Uh, what's this one? Quantitative metrics. Qualitative. Quanti qual qualitative. Sorry. Uh, this is also a relatively new uh, project uh, and allows you to do scoring. So, mm. so, how, so it's, how do you measure how do you measure your security essentially? It's it's very much a, a, an assessment. Then then that's almost that like maturity model, right? Where is this where you are? The the rate the or this is no, this is just the entries, right? Oh, that's the grade. Is that the thing here? The G is the G the the level that you're in, or I've never used the project, but I think it's it's supposed yeah, to uh... create your yeah yeah. Does it have PHP on the list? <laughs> I say it's a listed spring. Yeah. Yeah, spring. There you go. Yeah. yeah, the thing about these ones, right, is that you, you also need to make it specific to the technology, right? I feel that there has to be almost 100% mapping or 90% mapping with what's relevant to the to the users, or else it dilutes very very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. um, the thing, but it's definitely a very cool project, right? So actually, yeah, let's map it up. So, um, and, and the other thing would be interesting to see is to then see, you know, do some kind of survey or or, or get feedback on which ones of these and, and how are people using it, right? On, on the ground. So 
All right, so where, where do you guys would put that one? I think that feels more on the, uh, we guys say the testing and the code, right? Because that, that impacts how you do coding, right? Repeatable features for enterprises to pass the SVS, right? So it's it's going to be, I would guess it's actually under assess and test. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah. So another important one, Dennis, even though it's not listed under the flagship projects, but I feel you have to add it is the OWASP proactive controls. It's a lab project at the moment. All right. yeah, he's, already, he's already added them in. Added we them, added right? it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're right, Sam. They're, uh, I, I, I trust they will move up to flagship pretty quickly um, because they are incredibly useful. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem with some of this is that, you know, like you, it's, it's also, you know, being updated. But I, I think that the point is that if it's still very relevant, it should be way up there, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the testing guide, well, that's literally a testing, right? Um, cool, right? So, okay, now, now, since we, we're running a bit out of time, but like, what, what what's the top ones you guys would say we should add here, right? Uh, that you know that is worth actually the corner copy sure. is a really cool one, right? Yep, yeah. I was gonna say this, this is this is still very much one of my my pet projects, yeah. Uh, Dennis, do we have uh, OWASP Thread Dragon and OWASP PyTM? Yeah, was OWASP gonna... Thread Dragon is a very, very cool one, that's your. Threat modeling. Yeah. Yep. I was going to ask. So the corner copy is training too, right? Testing. Sorry. Uh, so, so training, training and uh, assessment. I actually have uh, dev teams use cornucopia as part of their story scrubbings. So when they're actually going through a backlog session, looking at stories to help them evaluate which stories might need security um, NFRs. That's actually really cool. Yeah, because basically it's like a game, right? That you play, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's actually, it's really cool. Right, so so uh, what was the one you mentioned, Sam? Uh, Threat Dragon. Oh, Threat Dragon, yeah, yeah. Threat yeah. Dragon, yeah. And there's also PyTM, mm. which is a Py Python uh, threat yeah, management yeah, register. Yeah. But Threat Dragon is your um, uh, diagramming tool and uh, it spits out your threat model in JSON. Yeah, which means you can all do your threat modeling as a code. Yeah, PyTeam is a very interesting project. I've never used it, but I've I've always wanted to get a, a a chance to because it essentially allows you to put your threats into your code. Well, the the key is to script. In fact, if you guys haven't seen this, right, you should take a look at um, the session that um, we did on Monday about the actually the, the team you know some the thing that was that's kind of here where we we started to use thread modeling to try mm -hmm. to do this so this is basically using plan to ml to create thread models so here's for example a thread model of our architecture of a kubernetes deployment written in plan to ml yeah so and, uh, the problem is it becomes a bit messy right so so the team is now working on the next version of this so this is another variation with nice icons but we're now starting to work on um on vis.js so the logic is to start to script it like you could see there's a trust boundary has a threat who has a vulnerability to a risk and then this and then could mitigate by the security control and then you know you actually take the data from a table put it into json and then you can see it in multiple flows. So here's an hierarchy view, and here is like a, you know, a more unstructured view. So you know, so so I actually think that this this is also so for them that PyTM will be a, a way to write some of these uh, diagrams, right? It's a way to actually codify the nodes and edges that lead to this. Yeah, and I think I think it's in the same way as you can do doc testing in Python. So it's like for this for this feature I'm writing for this function I'm writing. Yep. These are the this is the potential threat components that would then feed into a threat model you create up later. Yep. So, so this is basically um, this is actually the planning. Ideally, yeah, planning. Planning you know, and code. Yeah, but actually, uh, I would say most threat models today are done in a testing phase, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, actually, I actually would argue on training because I've done a lot of training on top of threat models. I think yep. so. I'm, I'm, 
it's a good way to to have teams think about security issues you know, as part of the teaching of how to think about security issues go through threat yeah. modeling so i'm going to be cheeky now here and uh, and add those two platform hey where's the page migration thing it was here i think i just saw it yesterday you, historic, historical counts are found here. You've already clicked on it, so the link is no longer bright blue. In the orange text, the last two words. Ah, there you go. But but what I would do is I'd reach out to the leader there. Um, yeah. Who, the guy, that, that guy, Dennis Cruz, you should just ask him to migrate his page. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. And um, yeah, if you, if you want a tool to automate a lot of the stuff and to um, build a lot of... Um, of, uh, of kind of, um, actually, where, where would test automation, uh, testing here, right? Um, yeah, probably on, Build. yeah, I, I think this one would fit in there. Yeah. Yeah, in those two. And, um, but also on, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, that's a good point. I need, I need to go and, and update the, the stuff and add, uh, add the, the information about this, right? Um, Cool. All right. Any uh, last couple of minutes? Any final honorable mentions that we should add here? That projects that you guys think are worth mentioning? Um, if we put in cornucopia, we should probably mention elevation of privilege, EOP. Um, where is that one? Uh, I don't think it's here. Really? No. Actually, this is a good one. Hey, it's really cool. Oh, I like this one. Top 10 privacy risks. Oh yeah, there, there's a whole list of top 10s that we should like give an honorable mention to, right? So there's there's uh, privacy risks. There's there's a top ten I, I, uh, IoT one. There's a top ten uh, serverless. There's a top ten. There's a there are a number of top tens that have come out. Yeah. Presumably, they the same as the, the the main top ten. They would fit in the same kind of categories. So could we lump them all together? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's worth doing that. So cool. Uh, okay, I think this, this falls probably on assessment, right? The OWASP top 10 family. Yes. So, so I guess my question now is what next, right? So that thing is shared. In fact, but just for reference, right? This, the thing that you've seen here is already on the, um, it's already on the site, right? So we'll, we'll put the video on there, but, but these changes that we've been doing here are already on the, uh, on the slide share, right? So I'll, I'll put the link there on the new one, but um, you could see that it's already um, the stuff that we've been creating are already here, right? Mm -hmm. On this. And by the way, if you again, you, you can just come in and, and and help to to maintain this, right? In fact, I'll just do that now. So that's that's just the the, the whole site is maintained by this. So um, so I guess my question now is, what, what what happens next, right? Like, how can we continue this? I think is I, I feel there's a bit of work that we can do between now and the next session, right? Where we can basically start now that we got a formula. It's almost worthwhile. Um, you know, thinking about, you know, what, what, what's the best use of our time, right? When, you know, if, if when we meet again in a month from now, what I think is if we were to have a, a first pass of this in a more mature state and then start to go to the details and start to basically even see if we got the definitions right and we got the, the, the mappings better, right? And actually start to get feedback, right? So, because then we can actually start to get feedback from both the users and even the, the, the tool and, and the developers of those, those of us projects, right? Yeah, so, so what, what I think we should do is we should put the, this slide deck out on the leaders list and have the leaders contact us, uh, come back with, no, I disagree, my project belongs here, or actually, hey, my project is uh, not mentioned and it should be there. Um, and then if we don't get enough feedback that way, reach out to the project leaders of the projects that we've we put into this list and say, listen, yeah. this is where we think your project fits. Are we right? Yeah. Uh, have you, are you like Simon? Do you reach out to your users all the time? And do you hear from them what they're doing with, with your projects? And do you use that as feedback to, to extend your projects and move projects in the right direction? Mm -hmm. um, and if not, can we help you do that in some way? Yeah. 
Cool. And so, so what, okay, from a, from a Open Security point of view, Open Security Summit, what, what can we do to help, right? So we're going to do that. We can host the next set of sessions. So we can look, we can do as many sessions as you guys want, right? The only reason I did two is because I created this on Saturday night when I was like, you know, I, I had two slots. I had the CTO round table and the CISA round table, which I was supposed to do something about it two weeks ago and I never did. And I was like, actually, I think I have a better idea for this one, right? So, but what, what can we do, right, for, for the next one, right, um, uh, that to help? Well, um, maybe deep dives on a couple of the, of the individual projects. Have those project leaders come on and talk about it. I mean, Simon did a great job yesterday going through a lot of what Zap's doing, but there's so much more we could talk about with just Zap. Yeah. Cool. Um, like, how do we automate it? What, what types of things are we doing to put Zap into our pipelines? How are we doing that? Um, have we had to make changes? Have we, you know, there's, there's, lots, there's lots we can talk about each project. Right. Zap, so, okay, Simon, second week of January, let me know what hours work for you and we'll, we'll book you in. All right, guys, I think we got the same thing as yesterday. Unfortunately, we do have a hard stop at four because we just do the same freaking Zoom account. Uh, Georgina, for reference, I think we do have different Zoom accounts, but it's all right, it doesn't matter. Uh, so we're gonna have to jump into there. But guys, everyone, thanks for the contribution. And I'll see you in a month from now. But let's let's keep the energy going now. Cool. Thanks. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Hey guys. I need to stop the recording. Yeah.